Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. It is Friday, October 16th, and we are back again for another live stream. We're always having fun with our live streams. They're the best. They're the best live streams in the industry. <laughs> are you with me, Dustin? Yeah, I'm here. He's, Dustin's going to be a little tired again today. He's a little no, I cranky. Having, I was having issues with the audio for a second. There. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, but we got a special guest today. Very special. We've had some special guests in the past, the last few weeks. But today's the specialist, the most specialist. Today we've got my little brother, my my dear little brother, <laughs> Travis Blaze. Say hi, Travis. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> so we've been wanting to do this for a while, and uh, so we're using uh, we're going to be like we did before. We're going to be using uh, Bobby Chu's Magma Studio drawing app, and he's going to be sitting in one country, uh, one corner of the country and I'm in the other corner of the country. He's in Seattle and I'm in Florida and we're going to be drawing together. So that's pretty magical. We're meeting in Oklahoma. How you doing, Trav? I'm doing great. I can't, <laughs> I can't tell if I'm online or not online. I'm sitting there going. You can't see us? Uh, you can't see me? Oh, that's because you don't have the see. Yeah. audio I from I Aaron and Dustin sounds excellent. Can you hear Travis excellent. okay? Okay, good. Can you hear me at all? Yeah, I'm hearing at you. All? Yes, we can hear you. So everything is great. I want to take care of a couple of things uh, before we move on. I uh, just want to remind you guys that this weekend, uh, this is a last week or weekend uh, for you to get my uh, Creatures of the Forest and Perspective courses for a dollar. We're, we're jacking those back up. So if you want to get those, uh, um, then jump on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com. You got the slide yep. up. And, uh, and you can grab them for a dollar because we're jacking them back up to their normal price. And also, I want to remind you that my dear brother Travis has a mm -hmm. course out on our website called How to uh, Animate in Calipeg. Calipeg, as you guys remember, is the app that was written for uh, iPads. Uh, for you to animate in 2D. So it's very, very cool. Travis got involved with the folks that created it really early on and started doing beta testing for him and has become pretty much an expert on it. And so he created a course on how to animate in Calipeg for us. And it's very, very cool. And it's 50% off right now. So go on over to Creature Art Teacher and check that out. If you have an iPad and if you're interested in animating, I'm looking at the wrong. Yeah, you're looking at, you're looking at the wrong camera. I'm looking at the wrong camera. I'm so used to looking at this camera. Uh, but if you're interested. If you're I know, right? New cameras. You're like, what am I supposed to do? Or is it over there? But if you're interested in animating in 2D, then, um, then check it out. It's very, very, very cool. Uh, convenient to be able to just sit there and animate on an iPad. You can sit on your couch and you can create a movie it's pretty darn cool uh what else are we are we oh um remember also uh ronnie williford do we have ronnie's uh slide up uh, pardon do Sorry. we have a slide for ronnie williford uh ronnie 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 do ronnie, we have ronnie, one ronnie. for him yes it, oh great because today as of today ronnie williford's introduction to drawing is available so if you pre-ordered it you've got it today and if you're interested in it you can get it today um, it's great. It's for it's it's definitely geared for the the uh, uh, the new artist, someone that's just now you know wanting to pick up a pencil and start drawing and just learn the basics. Ronnie is great at teaching that, and uh, and it's a wonderful, wonderful course. So check that out. It's uh, uh, Let's Draw with Ronnie Wolford, and um, uh, it's uh, I think it's about how many hours is it? About six seven hours something like that give or take it's, yeah it's it's, it's a it's good really... chunk of it's a good chunk of material so uh go on over and check that out it's really good and as you know if you're familiar with ronnie's teaching methods it's very calming very cool very collected very clear and uh and he gives you tons of information so that's great and then the other thing too is i want to remind you we've got all kinds of stuff from uh, uh tony cipriano we got a zbrush course uh from him we've got Lots of courses from Tim Hodge, and we've got stuff from Chuck Williams, stuff from uh, Lyndon Ruddy, and of course Travis again. So Travis, I don't have slides for them. What's yes. that? I don't have slides for all the other. Oh, guys. that's okay. I was just running down the list. That's all right. But <laughs> you're freaking me out. I was like, oh, I don't have those ads. <laughs> no problemo. I'm drinking my my flavored soda water, which I've I've heard described as um, watching static and and someone whispering this uh, this. Whispering a flavor in the next room. That's what it is. <laughs> and uh, I am drinking my big Kahuna, my, my normal big Kahuna cup of coffee. 
right on. And so I'm Travis Mountain Dew Voltage. It's as big as my head. Look yeah. How big that is. Yeah, but your head's it's not very big. Time. My head's twice the size of your head. But um, uh, so Travis, Travis, real quick, is uh, Travis is uh, doing um, story uh, is a storyboard artist right now for Netflix. Is that right? You want to tell yes, tell everybody yes. what you're doing right now? Yeah. Well, currently I am doing storyboards for a show uh, called Intergalactic. Uh, the creator is. Uh, Kid Cudi, uh, the music by Kid Cudi, and uh, the creator, Kenya Barris, and Maurice Williams. Uh, Kenya, if you guys may or may not know him, he has done movies such as uh, Girls Trip and two TV shows called Blackish and Black AF. Yes. Hilarious writer and creator. But uh, What is well, Black, what really... Black AF stand for? Uh, um... <laughs> Hold, hold on, film. It's films. In the, something film because it, it's the whole concept is his daughter is doing a documentary about trying to get into film school, so she's got to do a documentary about herself, and so she's documenting her whole family, and it's just it's showing a whole like how dysfunctional their family is, like every family is. That's pretty awesome. But it's really funny. Yeah. So. Auto focus. <laughs> it's as. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I didn't want to say it. Thank you. No, I was just putting you on the spot. <laughs> uh, Travis is a little quiet. Maybe turn up the speaker volume for. Yep, I'll do that. Turn me up. Turn me turn up. Turn it up. I'll do this. Turn up. Yep, I'm doing all that, Nick. Right now. There we go. So, um, so we're gonna draw today. Travis and I haven't sat and drawn on the same paper since I don't know since we were in kids. This is gonna be kind of fun. Well. This will be and, and you know the last time we did a live stream together is when we did the kitten. No, I know. Remember that? That was two years ago. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So um so what I want what we need from you guys, we were sitting there talking about what we're gonna draw today, and neither one of us has any idea. So we figured we'd take a prompt from you guys and Travis and I'll just start drawing. So give us some prompts. Travis is a little quiet, so I hope I hope he's coming through better. There's Travis. Travis is drawing. We could only hope prompt. Oh All man! Right, recommendation. This soda water is making me burpy. Uh, a little, little burp. Oh, burpy. A little, little gassy. No, just spit in my hand. <laughs> Question: Will Travis call Aaron during the live stream as usual? <laughs> <laughs> Something in a hot air balloon. Something in a hot air balloon. Uh, Eddie, Eddie Van Halen. Uh, a hammer. <laughs> a hammer? A hammer. <laughs> Just draw a hammer. <laughs> a hammer? Mohawks. Uh, can you draw some apes today? Gorillas, orangutans. Oh, there we go. Let's do that. I'm going to jump on that. Somebody else said oh, uh, something Halloween. I'm going to have to. Wait, we're going to no, I challenge you. I challenge gorilla? you. You can't. To, to draw a gorilla? I'll just watch you ahead of time. But, uh,. You gotta, you gotta get rid of that that little drawing you did over there. It's in, it's in my space. <laughs> What's get out that? Of my space. You're in my space. All right, so we're officially the doing. Shadows. Get rid of those shadows. Oh, 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 oh! Sorry. Yeah. So we're officially doing uh, apes. Savage, yeah, sabotage. Uh, any kind of ape. Any kind of ape. All right, question time. Anybody got any questions? So we wrote in all caps, a bear. <laughs> well, Travis, Travis was one of the animators of Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. I, I was. Yes, you were. So for those of you that don't know, uh, Travis is a very excellent animator. And was one of the animators of Stitch. And uh, I'm sure you could draw one of those if we asked, if you asked, if someone asked nicely. I'll do this. Oh, 
Oh, we're getting quiet. <laughs> so we're drawing. Draw, we're getting quiet. Here, let me do this. Oh, it's I'm going to create a layer on top. New layer. There we go. And I'm going to go super. Oops. Oh, we got a specific ape uh, recommendation. Apes playing poker. What happened? Oh, I didn't want to copy it. No, turn that what, off. What did happen? I want a new layer. Why is it giving me a copy? Oh, I see what it's doing. What are you doing? I need that. That's what it is. Okay. And now I want my opacity being all the way up. YouTube suggestion. Uh, draw yourselves as bears. Brother brother bears, if you will. <laughs> Can we get these animals in costume? For, uh, for the Halloween-esque feel. No. Tell us some some things about when you were when you guys were working at Disney at the Disney Studio together. Um, well, we worked at Disney Studios together, like you said, and it was awesome. It was fun, you know. The Bancroft brothers were the only other set of brothers that that worked at the studio, and uh, but it was it was it's fun having you know your brother working at a big studio like that. We had a good time. We fought just like we always did. You know? Uh, yep, we did. We did. <laughs> but generally, we got along great. <laughs> I remember when we, we'd, uh, we would fight to the point of uncomfortability for Chuck and, and Bob in the room. In the <laughs> and we'd have a disagreement. We, we'd automatically, it was just so weird because we'd automatically go into brother mode and not realizing it. <laughs> and, and everyone would just kind of look at us like, okay. Yeah. But. What's the difference between premise and theme, if there is any? A pro, well, a theme is, a theme is the underlying emotional part of it. What is the emotional journey of this? It's is you know, what is it about in that way? Premise is more plot oriented. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like setting up what the theme is going to be. It works in conjunction with the theme. Yeah, here's the premise. It's about a kid who's friends with a professor and he creates a time machine and they go back in time to the 1950s. There's the premise. Now the theme. The theme, I the think, theme. in that one is probably you can't live in the past or whatever. That might be the theme. Yeah, you got to, it's better to live in the present. In the moment. Yeah. I think this question is towards uh, you, Uncle Travis. Uh, what was one of your more favorite scenes to work on or more difficult scenes to work on uh, for Stitch? Uh, it would be, hands down, the luau scene. Um, um, during that movie, I had to do a lot of... They, they, they always gave me scenes that had multiple characters. So I was constantly doing scenes with three or four characters. So I never... I typically didn't share scenes. I usually just, they'd give me the scene and I would just do all of it. Um, so I did a luau, the whole luau where he's uh, chasing the chicken, uh, the, the alien chicken leg uh, <laughs> when they're in the luau. So from Lilo and, so, so I had to do Lilo and then I had to do Stitch, the chicken leg and uh, Jumbo and Pleakley all at the same time. And when you're animating, it's like a big choreographed effort to make them all feel like they're being animated at the same time. So whenever they connected, um, I would draw them on the same layer, uh, like Jumbo and uh, Pleakley? Uh, Stitch. Oh, yeah. But didn't you do Pleakley? Did, you did, in that section, didn't you do Pleakley all dressed up in drag as well? I did. And yes, I actually had him swallow his head at one point. I know. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was great. It was like 360 frames and... Uh, and I remember, Aaron, you were watching the, to change the subject, but you were watching um, uh, or you, you showcased and shared the documentary, which I watched, by the way, Brother Bear. Uh -huh. um, and even though I wasn't in it, there was a ton of scenes that I had that were in there. And I still have my rough roughs of the very end scene of the movie where uh, Sitka and Pinai, Bear and Coder are, are wrestling with each other. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but I had to. That's another scene where I had to animate um, a huge chunk where they're all 
you know, uh, like 24 field paper because we're zooming out that final pullout. Yeah. So uh, hold on, let me. Uh, what happened? Where'd your? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna redraw. Just shush. Just keep doing your drawing. Okay. It's funny how you called uh, yeah. the Russian animation rough, rough, <laughs> rough, rough, <laughs> rough, 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 rough. Sounds like a dog. Well, you know. <laughs> See, so what it would be is a lot of us would do our initial roughs, which were our gesture drawings. Our rough rough. And then we, would, then we, when we go to tie down to turn it in for cleanup, we would do another drawing a lot of times. And so I would keep my roughs. So I have all the roughs, rough roughs, rough roughs. Of, uh, <laughs> of that scene, including a lot of, uh, including the luau scene too. The brother bear, I got a bunch of stuff, and then the luau. And, then, and I actually found the other day, remember that movie called Kingdom of the Sun? That became Emperor's New Groove. I actually found some old animations that I did of the mummy during the Isma uh, song sequence that never happened. Oh yeah. Uh, which yeah. So I I, I was uh, sharing that the other day. Um, you'll see that probably on Instagram or something soon, uh, ish, soon ish. <clears throat> How do you resize on here? Can you resize? Can you resize, kid? Could you draw a stitch for us, please, please? Sure. Uh, were there any films that you two worked on together? Oh yeah, Brother Bear. <laughs> uh, just Brother Bear. Brother Bear and uh, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Beauty and the Beast and um, Aladdin. Yeah. And Lion King, and Mulan. Mulan, a whole bunch. There's a ton wow. of them that we worked on together. Really? <laughs> yeah. How do you resize these? How do I make the drawings? Uh, you know, that's a, that's a good question. I tried. No, I knew before. I knew before. Uh, edit. Paste. New. What's your favorite animal yeah. to draw, and what animal do you oh, right think here. is Duh. easier to draw? Say that again. What's your favorite animal to draw, and what animal do you think is easier to draw? Um, my favorite easier animal. I, I just obviously I love drawing bears, and I get to, we get this question every week. I love oh, drawing. Uh, well, actually, I like drawing uh, right now. I like drawing gorillas. <laughs> I have to get into my gorilla mode again because I'm I'm not I'm. You know, that's a good looking gorilla. You forget the anatomy, huh? A, uh, What's that? I said it's a good looking gorilla. Oh, thanks. Hey, thanks. Well, thanks. Thanks, Chad. Gotta get that perspective working right. Ah, let's see here. There we go. Scribble, scribble, scribble them in. That's what I'm doing. Oh, why is this? Oh, here we go. Oh, there. Little big fat butt. A big belly right here. There we go. Uh, did you help each other at all, like giving each other advices, etc.? No way. Can't stand it. Can't stand them. So no, I wanted them to fail. Yeah. Um, <laughs> same. Same. I would sabotage his artwork. Like if he did a really, really, really nice scene of Beauty and the Beast, I would steal it, burn it, and so he'd have to animate it all over. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Like the whole, you know, the whole sequence. Oh, that hurts. I he probably had to do that twenty times because I kept sabotaging it. <laughs> Sorry, Aaron. I had to. I had to fess up. No, but we um, no, we always we always give each other advice and help each other out. If we have the chance. Although you guys would prank each other. Oh, uh, we pranked each other all the time. Oh, man, I missed that whole story with... <laughs> with Tim Hodge? at one point, you know, when Tim Hodge was on, we we all were... We shared the same room together. And that whole prank with the oatmeal with him that you guys shared, that was... No, that was, Col that was coleslaw. Coleslaw, that, that basically he did not know for, like, months... Yeah, I think it, it went on for two months, two months the before, pile. Yeah, before the coleslaw came out. It's funny, all this time, I've heard that coleslaw story so many times, and yet it wasn't until the stream when we had Tim Hodge on here when I 
when I realized and found out that it was him that got that prank. Yeah. Well, he was the one that started it. He was oh, pitting, yeah. he was pitting Travis and I against each other. I never knew that but detail was, all this was, time until that time. Until it was great because uh, he's such a good sport. Oh, I know. And he was he and he was just like, you know what? Wow, you got me. That was like, that was good. <laughs> that was like one of those. Let's wait. Like you, every month that went by was even better until yeah. we forgot that we even did it. Well, my favorite part Remember was when he, he got down to I know, but he got down to like getting grease spots on his on his paper. Is anybody else getting grease getting greasy paper? <laughs> uh, both of you had a had a similar start in life and working together later on. How do you find that your styles differ, and what do you think led to that? Oh, well, we're just different people. That's all. Yeah. I mean, I mean our styles are complete. I mean. Uh, unless you're the Bancrofts. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not the Bancrofts. <laughs> no, I'm just, uh, no, our, our, our styles are completely different. And yes, and that someone's saying, yes, they are. And it's just because we're different people. That's all. Oh, uh, you know what I hate, um, on this thing is like when you're drawing, your your air and blaze pops up and I can't draw because it's covering my oh like this <laughs> yeah uh, yeah just yeah go like ahead that. go ahead and draw no no that's just like <laughs> that's typical Aaron thanks thank you come on you got to draw <laughs> hey Travis love your new course on Aaron's website it's really nice thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. That's awesome. Now it's it's uh we're gonna be coming up. I think Nick, we still have to do a couple of updates. Uh, yeah. For that. Um. Uh. Because we're they're, they're gonna be the great thing about this is as this um as Calipay gets bigger and bigger and people know because we you know we released this Calipay tutorial. Uh. You know, with the idea that as this thing grows, it's going to be, you know, it's going to help new artists coming in that are, are buying the program that have iPads and the new AirPad, the i the new iPad Airs that are coming out are really awesome. So I'm buying a, uh, a couple of those for the for my my kids for their birthdays. Oh yeah. Yeah. Then yeah, I'm yeah. getting them palette. Actually, let's do I'm this. Getting them AirPads. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, what animal was Stitch uh, inspired by? Uh, French Bulldog. French Bulldog. Interesting. Truth. Yeah. And uh, Oops, can, can Travis talk a little bit about how he started at Disney? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I can. Uh, so <laughs> Good. Uh, it all started when Aaron came home one day from an internship with Disney. And he was showing us, ironically, a gorilla. Scene. Oh, that's right. You know, I this, forgot about that. On this thing called on this thing called a, a, a VCR tape. Yeah. Actually, you had a three quarter inch deck uh, that you had to transfer to to uh, the VCR, and yeah. then you showed it to me one time, and I was just blown away by like how cool, like you know, that how you could animate something on paper and make it move, like because we you know we naturally when we were kids, you know, we would do the typical. Uh, Little long, flip books, you know, little stick figures and flip books, but not knowing that it was animation, we just, you know, instinctively would draw it. But um, when Aaron did that and he got the internship with Disney, that kind of inspired me to uh, consider this go the same route. So, but even at one point, and I've told the story before, I actually quit art school. Uh, yeah, you quit, and went up and wrestled for a while. Yeah, and then I re quickly realized that nope, that's not that's not where I'm supposed to be. And um, then I, I got the uh, the internship in the spring uh, end of, of 2090 uh, for the oh no for summer of 2090, and then from there it was uh, I came back for second internship yeah uh, in the fall, and then um, and then I came back the following summer to work on Beauty and the Beast. And then after that, um, when I graduated from from college, college, um, college, I ended up 
I can't draw this hand for to save my life. Just scribble um, it. I ended up working full time uh, with Disney uh, on Aladdin. So when people were walking across the stage to graduate, I was already going into 16 hours of overtime. Yeah. Working on that film. I got a YouTube question. Was Travis involved in the decision to change the laundry machine scene? Love that scene both ways. Uh, that must be Lilo machine. and Stitch. Is that Lilo and Stitch? Yeah, that's Lilo and Stitch. No, I was not. I was not um, a part of the decision making. That was strictly a Chris Sanders and and the producers and everything. They um, they had to rewrite and redo a lot of that because of the violence issue. So um, uh, they you know they felt like <laughs> originally, if you remember, uh, Jumba or uh, Pleakley, I can't remember, was it Jumba? You know, with the whole Swiss Army knife. They had uh -huh. to pop open the Swiss Army knife, and it had all these different gadgets, like machines, and they uh, decided uh, that was a little too violent, so they ended up <laughs> turning it into a, a more uh, happier version. So, um, and then, of, of course, you know, the big change was the whole yeah, the... Uh, final sequence flying through Hawaii, and they, yeah. they ended up making, uh, instead of a... Um, 9-11, they ended up turning it into a spaceship rather than... Yeah, rather than a jet. And they did that, like... They did that in two weeks. They yeah, it was crazy. And re render that out. Yeah, it was weeks. crazy. But all right, let's do oh, another drawing. Let's color. do bears. Oh wait, I was gonna color. Okay. okay. Yeah, color, and I'll just draw Can another. I'll draw another gorilla. Yeah. Well, uh, no, 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 no. I'll, which uh, are which? Uh, no, that's all right. It's okay. Go ahead. I wanted your it's two okay. gorilla. I just, okay. all I have to do is just do a quick. I'm just gonna do a quick blah 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 blah. <laughs> How did you find the transition from paper to digital animation? Did you still animate on paper from time to time? Are you talking to me or uh, I'm Travis? talking to both of you. Um, I as soon well, it's, animating on paper is fine, um, but you still have to shoot it. So unless I was, I never, I've never had a whole studio set up in my home where I could, you know, I had the camera set up and all that. So if I was drawing on paper, I had to uh, I had to shoot it at work. So once I went digital and I could do everything from home, then it didn't matter anymore. Is that something I need to answer for? Let me give him a little tail. Why is my Surrey coming on? Did I say something that sounded like Surrey? It did just now. <laughs> it did, Sur didn't it? Seriously? Seriously. 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 Come on. What's your favorite 90s movie that you did not work on? <laughs> like animated? <laughs> just any 90s movie that you're not. <laughs> That's a really random question. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I can tell you Iron Giant. Yeah. Um, that would have been an awesome movie to work on. Yeah. I'm going to have to agree with you there. When was that movie? 98, 99? Uh, you know what? I don't know. That was, I think, 98. 98, 98. I think you are correct. Aaron, before designing Raja, did you do the Tiger st uh, Studies? Yes, I did. I did lots of them. Ah, here we go. Iron Giant was released July 31st, 1999. There you go. Good call there, Dustin. Space, 1999. Hey, stop going over my thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Does that bother you? Does that bother you? <laughs> this is fun drawing with you. No, it's not. Yeah. There's a funny well, phenomenon. I'm a moment. <laughs> There's I'm a funny a phenomenon moment. where a movie or a character is more popular in a foreign country than in a country where it was created. For example, Travis, did you know that Stitch is pretty much more popular in Japan than it is in US? Uh, I did. I did know that. It's uh he's this he's this a, a huge phenomenon. <laughs> That's exactly what I Phenomena. just had singing through my head. I, knew, I, knew, I was waiting for Dustin to kick in. Phenomena. <laughs> do, 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 
Phenomena. Phenomena. Alright, who didn't love And uh, there's no. Doesn't really say who this goes to, so I'm just gonna ask this to both of you. Uh, which one of your. Which one was your favorite character from Lilo and Stitch? Um. Uh. I love I love Pleakley. The voice the voice of Pleakley. That was Ruben Aquino. Pleakley was? Ruben Aquino. Yep. That That voice was awesome. What's the guy's name that did the voice? He's from the Kids in the Hall. Oh God! Right. Uh, Was he from Kids in the Hall? He was. He wasn't. He was from Kids in the Hall. Canadian. Canada. I love Pleakley, but I also love um, who was the the giant scientist uh, partner? It's Pleakley and um. Well, there's there the spaceship. Yeah, the sci- Are you the, about Jumba? the scientist, the mad scientist. Are you oh, talking about Jumba? Jumba. Jumba. Yeah. What uh, did you think Jumba, that we walked here? Jumba. Do you know the the Jumba, voice of Jumba. Jumba is also the voice of Cogsworth? In, yep, and he was also in. Mash. Mash, yes. Oh, Mash. really? Yeah. yeah. The voice of Cogsworth is also the voice of Jumba. I had no idea. <laughs> Look at that, a little, a little monkey. A little cute little monkey there. And I forget what color he is. He was uh, more like a purplish. Yeah, he was like no, nah, purpley blue kind of. Between the two of you, colors. who was more of a troublemaker, and why? Aaron. I was. <laughs> Aaron. Really, you were? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was a late bloomer. I was a mean. I was a mean brother, first of all, which I always. He was very mean. Yeah. Very traumatic. Yeah. I'm still living. You know, I'm still traumatized by a lot of the things that he. he, Travis and I lived through a lot of different things that, I just yeah I just, I process those things by being a mean brother. Put it that way. But. Well, just let's clarify. Aaron and I did. Aaron and I are brothers. We did grow up together, even though we have nine or ten siblings. Uh, you know. I have, we have, you know, eight other siblings. Um, so that, there's that. Uh, how do you, okay, color pick. There we go. But, um, yeah, I was, um, I was definitely the troublemaker. I got into a lot of trouble what? doing stuff that I shouldn't so have been doing. Are you surprised? No, not really. <laughs> I was I'm just, like, a, I was just acting. Su- like, he's your... He's your dad. <laughs> How could you be surprised? <laughs> uh, what did you work on during your internship at Disney? Uh, what were important lessons you learned? Mine, mine was, important. yeah, mine was basically just, um, it was just that the perseverance, you know, up to, it was interesting because up to that point, as far as my internship goes, up to that point, everything I did in art was relatively, it came to me relatively easy. And, and so when we started, when I started with my internship and I had to learn animation, I really struggled with animation and it really got me down because I'd never really struggled like that before. And, uh, and it was a big pill to swallow. I had to swallow my pride, you know, and, um, and it took, it took a lot of work. Whoops! What am I doing here? What was the uh, movie they worked on during your internship? Oh, there were, there was no movies. We didn't have. I just learned how to do a walk cycle and learned how to do cleanup drawings. The movie that was being made at the time was uh, um, Oliver and Company. Ah. How about you, Uncle Trav? Uh, what was the, <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> uh, what did you work? Looks like uh, a Curious George hybrid. <laughs> yeah. What did you work on uh, during your internship at Disney, and what were important lessons you learned while working there? 
Oh gosh. Um, don't fall in love in your drawings. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I learned filmmaking. I learned everything that I want that there is to know about writing good story and, and good cinematics and, and good acting. Uh, it all came from working on the job, working, working at Disney. So, you know, I definitely learned everything. I think, you know, college, college taught me uh, the fundamentals of art and animation and that, or, I'm sorry, art and um, drawing and, and structure and, you know, value and uh, anatomy. And then once I got to Disney during the internship, you know, they specifically wanted artists like us that didn't know anything about animation. So they wanted to train us. And so we just applied our knowledge of academic skills to the art of animation. And the first time I saw my animation move was like, that was that was it. I was hooked. Yeah. Um, and then I just wanted to learn more. I wanted to, you know, really get into involved with story more, um, and really understand what it takes to tell a good story through the art of animation. And all of that happened while I was on the job. Uh, and I'm still learning. I mean, you you don't stop learning, right? This is like a continual journey. Like I still work in the industry. And I'm still working on different productions and developing my own stuff and. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, uh, it's a lifelong journey of knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. And for the people that just hopped in, what program are you using that, uh, lets you both draw together? This is called Magma Studio. It's a Magma, an app Magma. that Bobby Chu has created. If you go to, uh, Magma Studio dot io you can test it out there it's very cool <laughs> this is an interesting question if you could be a muppet which muppet would you be and how would you feel about a 2d animated muppet movie or tv <laughs> show that's a hat on a hat 2d <laughs> animated muppets our drawings kind of animated muppets yeah but which which of the Muppets would you be? I am. Man, which one am I be? Would I be? Um. Animal. Oh yeah, animal. Thank you. <laughs> Vedanta got it. I'd be animal. the one. The one on the drums. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a young animator. It usually takes me a week to get two seconds of animation done, plus in betweens. Is that too slow for industry standard? And please, how do I get faster? Well, first of all, it, it, it takes time. That's not too slow. No, it's not too slow. Depends if you're in no. TV. If you're in TV animation, then yes, that's too slow. But um, but not for featured animation. But you also, um, you say you're a young animator. I'm curious to see how young you are. Um, if you're just in high school, you've got you know you got some seasoning to do. You got some learning to do. Um, it's not something that come. It's, it doesn't happen overnight, and you gotta you gotta you know let time go by and learn. And the only way you get better or get faster is by doing it a lot. And going back to the uh, previous question, what what would you be, uh, uh, Travis? Uh, shoot. That's a good one. I don't know. You pick, Dustin. Which one would? Which one do you think I would be? A little tiny one. <laughs> You'd be emo. <laughs> emo. Uh. <laughs> really? I'm <laughs> outside. <laughs> oh, Elmo, not emo. Elmo. Yeah. Sorry. I got my. <laughs> No, what was the um, like... no, what was the real what was that um the the two scientists which one was the one that was like me, 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 oh, beaker, yeah. beaker 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 <laughs> I think I'll be Kermit I'll be the Swedish chef Green's my favorite color yeah <laughs> you drawing a Muppet Aaron <laughs> Muppet like it. I said, uh, it looks like you're drawing a Muppet. 
Travis, how is it to be yeah. colorblind as an artist? Uh, what are the things you struggle with? Oh boy, uh, you Color? know, it, it, there's this there's this beautiful thing called the 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 triadic color uh, wheel that's on in these digital things that allow you to kind of if you know understand the fundamentals of triadic colors and complementary colors and then with the we you know with digital it's it's made it a lot easier for me to to know where I'm at in terms of color. Um, so I haven't I haven't had really big issues lately, but I've been told my my choices of colors though what I what I how I draw is very um, they different. get a, they get a little funky sometimes. Yeah, but I but it, they work. Oh, they work. They work for me. They work if for that's me. what you think, then that's awesome. Oh man. <laughs> no they work it's fine it's better than the days I you used to draw like red trees and you know things like that that were kind of funny some of the Disney features had excellent storytelling and others less so is there a common factor that causes a story to develop well or not um, uh, too many cooks in the fire uh, too many cooks in the kitchen for sure that can happen, but I don't know. It's it's just like not every drawing I do is great. Not every painting we're going to do is going to be, you know, sometimes it's hit and miss. Um, and and that's I think that's how it is with filmmaking. You know, not every not everyone's going to be as good as the last. That's for sure. You want it to be. But um, it's a yeah, it's a it's a struggle sometimes. No, not all, not sometimes. It's always a struggle. That's true. It is always a struggle. You know, the best thing you can hope for is just as long as you create a story that comes from the heart and you're, you know, you guys, you, you do your best to put what you think is going to be the story that is right for, you know, the creator's vision. And, yeah. And if it doesn't resonate, it doesn't resonate. But, you know, if you hold true to that vision, that's the best you can hope for, really. You know, and then hope that that resonates with a, you know, has finds an audience. Right. Uh, to the both of you, what was, um, what was the most common art mistake that you guys made in the past? The most common art mistake? Yeah. Oh, geez. Uh, not doing enough research, probably. I mean, yeah. you always, you always, you know, drawings are going to be bad when you're young. You just, and you got to learn. So, I mean, neither one of us had great drawings when we were young, even though we thought they were good. What do you think about anime and Japanese culture? Uh, I love it. I love the, it's a whole different style, and I love that. How about you, Uncle Chav? Um, yeah, I, I like the, the, the fact that there's a resurgence of that. I mean, you know, <laughs> um, an owl. it's a good owl. <laughs> and um, I'm excited because, you know, um, Netflix has really embraced um, anime. And uh, there's, you're, you're, you're going to be seeing a lot of really good stuff coming out in the, in the uh, next year or two um, with anime. I was, that's, I mean, I, working with them, I got to get a sneak peek of what they're working on, and it's pretty awesome stuff. They got some great creators. They got, you know, people like Jorge uh, working on stuff, to Alex Hurst, to Glenn Keane and his son. Uh, you've got Craig McCracken. Um, Phil got, McCracken! You know, like this, like this, this Kid Cudi project is, is, you know, it's pretty, it's a pretty awesome concept that they're creating uh so they're, they're trying to be innovative um as a studio to kind of bring something you know diverse and different and um so but with anime there's definitely a lot more that's coming out that i'm enjoying um i i do like uh what's that one well of course my favorite of my all-time all-time favorite and I consider it like American anime ish would be Avatar. Um, it's got that that heavy influence, um, and then uh, Dragon's Tale, and then uh, what's that Castlevania? 
Oh yeah, Castlevania. I know that one. Uh, and I think Castlevania is a is a powerhouse studios production, um, which is out of Austin, Texas. Which Ronnie would know because he used to work there. Yes, he was telling me about that. Yeah. Um, did Aaron work on Wolf Walkers? No, I did. I did a couple of drawings for them early on, of, you know, talking about wolves and stuff like that, but nothing that they, I, it was just a couple of weeks and it's nothing that got used. So really I didn't, I didn't work on the film, but I would have, would have loved to. And uh, I, I just love everything that Tom Moore and, and uh, Cartoon Saloon makes. That's the studio behind Wolf yes. Walkers. I just uh, Nora love it. Torme is is one of the founders of that as well. She she did the breadwinner and yeah. Um, she was I think ex executive producer on this that project. Yeah, both Travis um, and I both Travis and I both have been to uh, Cartoon Saloon and it's a great studio. It's it's a beautiful city that it's in. Kilkenny. Uh, Kilkenny. Uh, and we didn't go at the same time. We went at different we went at different times, but it was, yeah. it was pretty pretty awesome. Hey, Travis, did Aaron er ever tell yeah. you spooky stories to scare you as Big Brothers usually do? Uh, no, Aaron was spooky and scary. He didn't have to tell me stories. <laughs> I, was just straight I, up, I was just straight up mean. <laughs> he would chase me around with knives. Just a little bit. Just a, just a few times. You know, the whole, you know, so the whole brother bear scene where you're your, uh, oh, dangling spit! The, the, I did do that to Travis. Spit. <laughs> Except Aaron went and dangled the spit. He let the spit fall on me. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Not all that, the time. That's where the inspiration for that that scene came that, from. Oh, that's exactly it. Yeah, we we went into our our uh, our vault of reality knowledge of knowledge. Yes. <laughs> Bob did the same thing to his brothers too, so it wasn't just me. Yeah, how are you? Are you? Can you change the wedge or the size of the brush or any of that? Yeah, stuff? just use your bracket keys. My, my your brackets, brackets for you know, like you do in Photoshop, the brackets, left and right bracket, that'll make your brush bigger or smaller. Oh, are you guys excited? Use your bracket. Use your bracket. Do Wait. it. Do it, Trav. Use the bracket. Come on, do it. There you go. See. Are you guys excited for Glenn King's new film? Yes. Yes. Next question. <laughs> was, Travis, did you hear that Aaron is giving out 12 pound, 12 pound candy bars for Halloween? <laughs> what are they doing in Seattle for Halloween this year? <laughs> I'm not giving out 12 pound candy bars, but it's pretty close. I actually, sitting behind me, I do have 43 pounds of chocolate sitting there waiting to be given out. That's a lot of chocolate. That's a lot of chocolate. <laughs> Lots of chocolate. But yeah, is Halloween still going to happen in Seattle? Travis? Uh, Come on, man. What? If you're going to be on this no. show, you got to answer questions. <laughs> uh, in Seattle, the word on the street is, no, it's not happening. Oh. Um, you know, in our, in our neighborhood, we're not going to be, uh, no one's going to be walking around and stuff. So um, it's been pretty... It, yeah, it's been pretty strict in terms of what they're doing here. Pretty in, empty. You know, versus uh, Florida. Um, the streets so being pretty I, empty I out there. Foresee, I don't foresee any of that happening. Gotcha. What was, uh, have you ever been on any reference trips together? And if so, what were each of your favorites? We've never been on a reference trip together. We should. We should, yeah. Well, actually, um, uh, Vedanta and I are heading out to Seattle um, next uh, in the next couple of weeks to go see Travis, and we're going to be heading out so, into the wilds and maybe getting some reference reference there. I think we should do some kind of maybe a live stream while you're here. Maybe I'm on vacation, pal. Yeah. <laughs> we're, well, only, we're only there yeah. for four yeah. days. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to spend. Yeah. <laughs> what he what said. What she thing? said. Yeah. Yeah. What was the last Disney mind. productions you each worked on? Brother Bear. Last one I worked on uh, didn't get made. I was making King of the Elves, and but it didn't get made. 
You know what? I need some um, air here. I was working on a few good ghosts before they shut the studio down, and that never got made. So they, they kind of in one fell swoop said, hey, by the way, we're shutting the studio down, or the movie down, and we're closing the studio. Yeah. Have a good day. <laughs> Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Kind of feels like that's how how it happened at Digital Domain. We all come to work. Hey, uh, you can't access your computers because uh, we're shutting down the company. Have a nice day. <laughs> uh, will Travis eat the last hot chip? No, Travis won't do that. Uh, it's it's kind of like uh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, no. See, Aaron's Aaron's the the bold and adventurous one. Believe it or not, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I suppose, but I'm just like Aaron. When we were watching that, Cho and I were going, "Why? Exactly. Why?" Because <laughs> well, Vedanta and I, I thought mean, it would be funny. Well, speaking of which, what happened to the last hot chip? It. It's still sitting on the shelf. Is it really? Yeah. Oh God. Do you have any advice for becoming more patient when it comes to producing art? I usually end up sketching because I have a hard time focusing on things for a prolonged period of time. Then stop it. Yes, that's that's the quick and easy answer. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> hey, Gabby's on here. Gabby! 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 Hi! Hello, Gabby! Oops, I'm drawing over your thing. Travis, have you used any photo references from Dustin? Uh, yeah, remember I did the uh, whole otter live stream. That's right. And I used I used and I used Dustin's reference. Actually, these go the other way. There. If you guys had a scene with uh, effects in the animation, did you do the effects yourself? If so, which type of effects were the most complex? I think I think no, we didn't do the effects ourselves, but I think the most complex effects were in Mulan. Well, I know although it, I did do I did do a couple of effects on um, how to haunt a house. We had to do it. Our oh yeah, house. you had you did the props. Yeah, we did all the props um, with Brother Bear. The best thing that I did is the reflection of of Coda in the ice. Yeah, that which technically was character, but could have been an effects driven uh, thing. You're, you're reaching but right now. Would, you're you're definitely you're, reaching. You're reaching, dear. But yeah, but we could have. We we do sometimes indicate what we want to have happen for the effects animators to come in and actually do their magic. Yes. Like especially if 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 the character is like throwing dust or a torch, running a torch, we might indicate that. But that would be left up to the animator. Well, the yeah, animators. like the the yeah. scene that I did of the main ancestor coming to life when he swirls out of the when he swirls out of the stone. I I kind of did all the, the effects for that, but then they reanimated over the top and made it, you know, really cool. Aaron, before oh, Nick says, Aaron, you're getting a bit hot when you get talking loud. Maybe turn your gain down just a bit. Oh no, it's because I was leaning towards the the mic. Sorry. Aaron, what kind of bird is the blue one? They're all just uh, it's just made up. It was just a made up cartoon yeah. bird. Not a specific bird. Not a specific. And when I see the blue feathers on that one, it makes me think of a little blue heron. Ah, well, that's cool. That's that's great. <laughs> that's, that's great. Shut up and do your job. <laughs> <laughs> How'd we end up doing birds here? This is kind of cool. I, I don't I know. Thought, I think you guys were doing bears not. next. <laughs> I know. Well, we just started drawing. I started drawing a bird for some reason, and, and here we are. Do either of you remember the very short-lived 1984 Jim Carrey TV show Duck Factory? And would you be down for doing an, ho an homage to Dippy Duck? I have no idea what that is. I have no idea what that is either. Never even heard of that. Wow. Yeah, what the Dip heck is Dippy that? Dippy Duck. Dippy Duck? I don't remember that at all. Neither do I. Do you remember that, Dustin? No. No, it's 1984. How, how can I remember Yeah, that? but Dustin, 
Dustin watches old old cartoons. No, I never even. How did I end up? At... Hey, where's your move? Your layer up above mine so I can color this. Uh. Move your layer. Are you? I'm wait. Look, see the red layer. Move your owl layers. Uh, highlight your owl layers. Layers and put them up above mine. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Or tell you what, I'll just move mine below. No, just stop, 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 stop. Okay. I'll do this. Boop. There we go. Much easier. Okay. Oh, See, so... already I went right into Big Brother mode and told you to do it rather than me doing it. I guess it was a... Yeah, you know... exactly. And I, and I went into Little Brother mode going, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> okay, what? What? I'm sorry. Did I miss up again? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess the um, it was set in night. It it was made in nineteen eighty four, and it was Jim Carrey starring in a um, workspace sitcom, and he plays as a uh, new uh, animator for this uh, TV show, Dippy Duck. Oh. In fact, here's a uh, old photo of the cast. I don't remember that at all. Nineteen eighty four. Oh. Great album. 1984. Van Halen. Man, he is... He is young in these photos. It's 1984. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's almost 40 years ago. Almost. Not there yet. Yeah, that's, we, we were watching uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, uh, the whole trilogy, because I bought the trilogy. <laughs> uh huh. And, and the kids were like, holy crap, that's... That's what that's what, that's Keanu Reeves. Wow, he looks so weird. I see he was like twenty five when he did that. He's like fifty three now. Whoa, whoa, excellent. Whoa. <laughs> it's uh, Travis, are you going to be working on Snow Bear too? Uh, Aaron has not. Um, no, heck no. That's up, to, that's up to Aaron. He's trying to do it all himself. Now, if we, if I, if I get definitely, if I get to a point where, um, uh, where I've realized I'm not going to be able to do it myself, definitely Travis is coming on. But you know, the the goal is for you to, to do it yourself, to, to try to make it a, a, which is going to be you know, it's going to be a, a total art masterpiece by. Aaron. I think we've built it up too much at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Do either of you guys have a favorite superhero? Um, hmm, I was a superhero. I mean, I just worked on Crypto uh, and the Justice League, so that's coming out in a couple of years, or, or I think a year from now, uh, with Warner Brothers. And... I actually liked uh, a little bit of the Green Lantern in that, that one because they, they actually have it as a female character, and I thought that was pretty cool. Because I think Green Lantern, you know, Green Lantern can be any. Um, it can be a variety of things. I like I like that it's like whoever has the, the, the power, I guess, um, you know, can be the Green Lantern, uh, you know, true of heart. So I like that that concept that that anyone you know. <laughs> it's a nice do, tortoise. I like it. Do that. <laughs> What's that? I said that's a nice tortoise. I like it. Uh, let's see here. What about you, Dad? Oh uh, no. Hmm? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> a favorite superhero? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. No. Uh, not into that stuff. Let's see, what am I, no, it's my favorite superhero, of course. I like. And I? Aquaman, I like Aquaman too. I think my personal favorite has to be Captain America. I know yours is, yeah. I've always liked Superman. Superman.
Are either of you familiar with the effects animator named Ryan Woodward? He did a short film, uh, Thought of he, You. He, he's not an effects animator. He's a brilliant character animator. He works for Riot Games. He used to be a Disney animator. I don't know him. Ryan Woodward. He's uh, very brilliant. Very, very talented, amazing uh, uh, animator. And, I, you know, he, he's kind of like, a, I mean, he does it all. Like, he, he draws and... Uh, you know, yeah, he does all his own effects, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Aaron, what was your most prized possession that could not be used or even touched by your little brother without Big Brother punishment? Oh, uh, you know what? We never had that kind of thing going on. Um, first of all, we didn't have much, so there wasn't. I don't know that I ever had anything that was like that sacred to me other than like the bones and things like that, that I would uh, collect out in the woods, you know, but we didn't really mess with each other's stuff. So we never, it was never an issue. Um, can you think of anything, Trav? Uh, not offhand. I mean, I we, mean, Travis and I have some pretty anything, funny stories growing up. Travis, I mean, Travis raised... Not. Travis raised a peacock in his bedroom. This is true. I did do that. We we I don't remember that story. Yeah, we used to have we used to have a whole bunch of animals when we were young and we lived out in the woods in the trailer. And we one of the things you know, my mother loved to have animals, but she just didn't like to take care of them. So Travis and I took care of all the animals. And so one of the things that we did was we hatched we hatched chickens and ducks and geese and pheasants and peacocks and all kinds of stuff. Uh, we had um, incubator, two incubators in our living room. And every day there was baby chicks being born. And we had to bring them outside and get them all set up. And and uh, we had hatched a, a baby uh, peacock, a female. And Travis wanted it. So uh, he took it into his bedroom and raised the peacock in his bedroom. True story. Yep. Poop nice. everywhere. Poop everywhere. Yep, and then uh, we had raised a, uh, hatched a bunch of ducks, turkeys. We hatched all kinds of stuff. Does Travis know Glenn Vilpu or Proko in person? I know Proko. I do not know uh, Glenn Vilpu. Matter of fact, we all had dinner at Lunchbox together. Yes, we did. And... Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, we also had dinner uh, we, uh, with uh, uh, going? Peter Peter Hahn. Yes. Awesome guy. You went you went on a safari with him or something or did something with him or some kind of trip. Yeah, we went to Africa together. Uh, with yeah, with Manny and yeah the whole crew, which was pretty awesome. Oops. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Do you guys have a favorite animated TV series, whether or not it's Disney? Uh, yeah, it was um, Looney Tunes growing up was always our one of my favorites. Um, but Avatar, you know, the current one, like I still, I can watch Avatar over and over and over again. And I get sick of it. I just love the whole hero's journey and him having to learn all the elements to become the you know, and it wasn't, and the, at the end of the day, it wasn't about him. It was about family and about his his uh, relationships and how they work together in order to defeat uh, evil. And you know, it was cool. It was, it was it's it's one of my favorite um, anime series uh, that Nickelodeon, I think, did. That was Nickelodeon's production. Uh, yes. Yeah, it was Nickelodeon that has done both um, The Last Airbender, Avatar, and uh, Legend of Korra after that. Yeah. Yes. Legend of Korra. Korra. Which, which, you know, I started watching for the first time recently. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I like it. I, you know, um, oh, it's not working. I think that was a... It was, you know, the same creator, and uh, I think Dragon's Tale, or is it Dragon? The Dragon, the, the newest one that's on Netflix. 
I think I know which one you're talking about. The it's CG animated, if I recall. No, it's not CG. It's traditional. It's, it's oh, it the is same traditional. creators. Dragon's Tale. From from Avatar, I believe. You have it. Um, one of the one of the main characters is deaf, or one of the incident, one of the characters in the oh. show is deaf, and they do sign language, which is really cool. You haven't watched that? I don't think I have. I need to watch mm -hmm. that though at some point. Yeah. But uh, what about you, Dad? Do you have a favorite uh, animated series? Me? Yeah. Favorite animated series? No. I um, It's funny. I never really... I sound like the old crotchety guy in these conversations. I um, I never got into like animated series that much. Well... That's also, I mean, uh, you know, for me. Of course, I am. I am the old I'm crotchety still... guy, though. <laughs> well, yeah, and I'm. Well, for well, you, it's I probably mean, Looney Tunes. Then. Yeah, but I'm still in the industry, kind of doing working in TV. I mean, so I, 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 I kind of. Yeah. I kind of make it a point to watch this stuff. But I mean, I you can that. never go wrong with all the old stuff we grew up with. I mean, I loved, and and, and to this day, if if you know Warner Brothers cartoons are on, I'll sit and watch them. You know, I'll, I'll never get sick of Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner and all that. Mm -hmm. Duck season. Rabbit season. <laughs> I'll never get sick of that. <laughs> to and fro. Fur, you're hurting me. Please no, stop. It's, it's, it's zoinks in a way. <laughs> zoinks in a way. way. <laughs> zoinks in a way. Here, here, look at this. Zoinks in a way. So, so little known fact, um, I'm good friends with one of the uh, founding people of Funko. You know that toy company? Yeah. I was just at his house the other night. Um, we were having drinks together, social distancing drinks, and he gave me one of these. He's got so much Funko stuff, it's ridiculous. They started in the garage together. So if you, oh, that's cool. His name's Sean. Yeah. So I got, speaking of, I said I had to get this one because he said, which one do you want? I'm like, this one <laughs> he goes okay that's take fantastic. it it's yours it's fantastic yeah. it's fantastic in a way. have either of you ever animated in after effects i have not uh no you're learning after effects though aren't you travis is i mean travis dustin is well i'm just using um pre-made templates um yeah i mean yeah we're, we're both but, learning a little bit yeah still got quite a way, quite a lot to learn about after Effects in order to make it our own, but but yeah, what, I think once we once we figure out how how to make my own After Effects, it'll be really cool. Whoops, I'm drawing over your your little guy here. Oh, that's okay. The little hedgehog. Have you ever worked on Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network? Travis did. Uh, I did. I worked on Class of 3000 for Cartoon Network. And then more recently, Aaron and I found out, uh, and, I, and they still haven't released this. Uh, remember that movie, Wonder Park? That, um, yeah, it got released. It got released, Trav. No, the movie, but the series, I ended oh. up doing, I ended up re helping redesign some of the characters for the series. Oh, I didn't and know that. And then I was actually in, at Aaron's house when I was showing him the drawings couple of years back he's like hey i did development for that project yeah so well, so did so did uh Aaron david I, coleman yeah so we all worked on the same project at various times doing character design which was really funny um and i love it either that's but a really yeah, tiny bunny or giant birds or <laughs> it's a really tiny bunny or really huge birds there we go so for the show, the TV show, they wanted to revamp and kind of give a new look to some of the creatures, like the, like the monkey. They didn't really like the monkey design. So I redesigned the monkey um, and the little guys, too. And it looks like I, I found a sneak preview, I guess, of the, the TV show. And it looks like they kept some of my designs in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. Because, you know, because you, you might get on a show that's in early development and then when the show comes out, it looks nothing like what you gave because they, they went a different route. Right. You know, but you got paid for the project. Right. So, yeah, sure. you know, there's that. 
Why, why is this not letting me do? You okay? You all right, Trev? No, no, I, I can't. It's not letting me. So I've got 15 minutes before I have to turn into a Lily party. and I were talking about getting a tarantula last night. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Have either of you used a uh, Toon Boom Harmony? I used a T. I used TV Paint, but apparently Toon Boom is an industry standard. Um, I used TV Paint uh, mostly, but I have used Storybook Pro uh, for the industry. Yes, they because of TV. Toon Boom. Um, er, Toon Boom guy really got in, in into the studios early on and really kind of hedged their their way into. Uh, making it a, a kind of a staple program. I also just recently used Tube of Harmony for the first time uh, when we were doing Wakeham had an event where one of my friends, uh, you guys, you know, Mike Morris, he was hosting a reality show where he was getting people from different uh, parts of the state and then uh, a couple of people from out in South, South America to do a competition. They had 48 hours, or they had five days to do a 48 second animated short. Oh wow! And I was their mentor, but they were doing it all in Toon Boom Harmony. So I had to basically do drawovers for them and mentor them for that. So I had to learn the program really fast. And it's it's actually pretty good. I'm just not a vector person. Uh, when when I have a choice of what I want to use, I'd rather go uh, pixel bitmap, Rec you know, pixel based drawings. Well, that's a terrible spider I just drew. And Austin says that uh, Aiden says hi. Hello, Aiden. Hey. Hello, Aiden. How you doing, Aiden? Aiden's my grandson, for those of you that don't know. Hello, Aiden. What was the first animation that you got famous from? That we got famous from? Yeesh. Well, I think Beauty and the Beast put the studio, well, Little Mermaid put the studio on the map. We were, I was working at the studio when Little Mermaid was put out. I didn't work on Little Mermaid. Um, but I did work on Beauty and the Beast. And that I think that's the one that really put us over the top, was Beauty and the Beast. And then Lion King, of course, Lion King came along, and that was all bets were off after that. And that's when people knew you for doing Young, young Nala? Well, I, I don't know if they knew me for that, but I'm just saying it was it was such a big hit. It was a you know it was a big movie for us. Oh, I was just going to get to the next question. Sorry, Nick. What about you, uh, Uncle? Um, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? <laughs> my my brain was in like trying to find layers. Autopilot mode. <laughs> What was the first animation that you got famous from? Did you say animation? Animation. What was the first animation uh, that I you mean, got famous what, from? Uh, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I worked on Beauty and the Beast as a cleanup artist, but as an animator, um, I, Mulan, I, you know, I did a lot, of, most of the Huns that were in that movie. Um, and then Hunchback, I, I, that was my first kind of like sinking my teeth in as an animator. Um, Under I Kathy really, Zielinski. I was training, I was an animator in training uh, and uh, on Pocahontas, and then I officially became an animator after that. And then I got a call out of the out of the blue from P. Dan Hofstede, who's an animator in California, and said, "Hey, I just want to relay that you got a compliment from Glenn Keane because he really liked your your snapping of the uh, snapping of the, the the Indians and settlers when Grandma Willow snaps her her a branch in one of the butts and they go running off. And as a matter of fact, Tim told the same story to you guys." Because he did the live action reference that I used All right. running down the hallway. And so I based on that, they he said, Hey, there's an opening on Hunchback. Do you wanna you should you should uh, talk to Kathy Zelinsky? So I actually called up and asked to work on the project and they, they let me and uh, the rest was this history, is history after that. I mean, I really enjoyed working on that film. I didn't like the film itself in terms of the story. I know a lot of people like it, so but it was a fantastic experience because I it was the first time I really 
really got to learn from a seasoned animator like Patsy Blink and you know in animation and, and it was he was a really tough character to draw too. Really Did you guys watch draw. Tom and Jerry growing up? That's a personal favorite of mine. Yes, we did. So, did, um, did you watch the Umbrella Academy? Yes. Okay, and the last one, did you see the animation of the, was it the book, the animated book? What? During, yes. it, it was, you know, during the show, there was this, like, training program, and it was, I think it was an animated book or animated shelf? It was in the Umbrella Academy. Have you watched the newest season? You know, no. I've, oh. I've never watched the Umbrella Academy. Academy. But it, do you, oh, it, you should. But you know what I'm talking about? This animated, uh, I think it was a book. <laughs> anyway, Kathy yes. uh, Kathy Zelinsky animated that. Oh wow! Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah she got into 3D animation. I ran into no, her it's, one it was, day. It's hand, it's hand drawn animation. No, but she was doing 3D. So okay, back in the day, like this was a couple of years ago, I was working at Disney. Um, and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm walking down this building, and Kathy Lewinsky pops out. And she we kind of looked at each other. It's like, oh, we haven't seen each other in over, over ten years. She was working for a three D effects house company, doing you know big you know high end movies and stuff, oh. doing animation. And uh, yeah, and then that was the last time I talked to her. So that's why I automatically assumed it was um, the three D thing. Gotcha. So. Oh, look, I got a little fox there. Wait, maybe we got a whole, we got, got a whole like. We got a little menagerie. And speaking of three D animation, have uh, either of you tried doing that? I've never done three D animation. I'm sure Travis has done it I, at some point. Twice that I tried to to learn, and uh, the first time was during a few good ghosts. They were training us. The second time was on Aaron's project, The Legend of Tembo. I was doing story, and then Aaron said, "Hey, go over there and learn." teach acting and then learn how to 3d animate so i started <laughs> doing that and then they set the studio down so, yeah there you go that was the only two times that i ever attempted to uh learn and uncle what character uh did you work on in the hunchback on the uh, frollo 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 was frollo was the character that i worked on in hunchback that was a, uh, um, you know, uh, if, if there's a scene, the scene to, to look at would be um, where they're up in the, he's up in the bell tower and uh, Hunchback is, uh, Quasimodo is hiding under the table. And, yeah. he, and he goes, something's different here. Ah, oh, what is this? And he's carving out Esmeralda. Yeah. That whole thing. And then he drops and he's eating grapes. I wouldn't do that, you know, that kind of thing. So he's like, um, the whole sequence, I did a bunch of the Frollo in that scene. That would be the most, I guess, recognizable stuff that I did. And other than that, I was given a lot of uh, smaller scenes throughout the, the movie that were incidentals and stuff. Um, but then I was given a couple of really big scenes. Well, it was kind of oh, your first movie as an animator, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, but she gave me, she was really generous with giving me some good quality scenes. I think the biggest scene she gave me was, uh, it was Dave, uh, well, now it's not Dave, it's uh, Brewster, it's, um, I forget. Yeah, Dave Brewster. At the time. Well, Dave is now Darlene. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but at Darlene, the time it was Dave. Uh, went, yeah, but, at the, but Darlene and I worked together on that project. And Darlene did uh, Phoebus, and I did, um, or Esmeralda and Phoebus, and I did uh, Frollo. And it was when they were being held, because, oh, and look who we have here. And it was like a 35-foot scene. It was all acting and dialogue. And it was really cool, because I got the, I was in, I was flown out to California at the time to work on it. So, um, yeah, that was my big, big, uh, other big scene that I worked on in that movie. Uh, and that was my first time ever meeting, or um, even though he was in Paris, Sergio was also working on Frollo. Um, I got to see his stuff, and he was <laughs> such a freaking brilliant animator. Uh, Travis, what are your thoughts on the show Adventure Time? Uh, I love Adventure Time. I think it's. I think Adventure Time is great. Um, I think it's very, it was very innovative for the time, and I think that's 
you know, that's the beauty uh, of Cartoon Network. I think, you know, they've always, uh, are, my favorite cartoons, I think, in the 90s were Cartoon Network, you know, Powerpuff Girls to, to Dexter's Lab. To, Ed and Eddie. Uh, Ed and Eddie. You know, all of those movies, all those shows that came out um, were, were brilliant. Um, but I loved Adventure Time because I really felt like that was um, not the last of their great stuff that they've done. But I think it was really, uh, well, Steven, Steven the Universe is also another good one that's come out after that uh, series. Oh, what am I thinking about? Regular Guy, too. A reg regular Guy with the raccoon and the bird? or Oh, yeah, I've heard movie? of that one. Yeah, that one's great. Um, Aaron, I have to go. It's, it's about that time. Travis has a meeting. I, so I have gotta... a meeting in about five minutes that will last about 20 minutes. But if you're still on, I can always come back on. Now, we're going to be signing off because we're going to be moving on to some other stuff that we need to do for next week as well. Okay. So that was a fun little all drawing right. session. Yeah. Look at all this stuff. I know. Pretty uh, cool. little Pretty animals. Cool. Uh, real quick, uh, the characters that you guys are drawing now, what are they talking about? Oh, they're all sharing stories about when they were brothers, younger brothers. I don't know. No, I, I think I think what it is is the owl and the turtle have come back to kind of tell what they what they were they were just coming back from doing some intel on some new uh, development in a subdivision that's tearing down their forest. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so they're they're telling everybody, yeah, and there's this like huge bulldozer that's coming in, and I think it tore down your tree, your nest. Yeah. And they're all happy about it. And the and fox, the fox is all smiling. He's he's the dimwit. <laughs> The bears in the back looking all worried. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Uh, Travis will do this more often. It was cool. Maybe we will do a stream from uh, Seattle, but I doubt it because we're going to be out in the wilds. And we're going to be at this. Yeah, up in the, no. no, we're going to be up in the Space Needle. And we're going to be having food up there. It's going to be awesome. Sounds like fun. Space Needle food. We're going to be going out into the mountains. We're going to go. Oh, we're going to also. I'm going to take Aaron's never. Aaron's traveled the world, guys. But has never been to the Pacific Northwest specifically. Seattle. Well, I've never been to Seattle. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so sorry we're about gonna that. Take yeah. him, we're we're going to take them to the islands. We're going to go see orcas. Yes, we are. We're going to do all that stuff. And we're going to draw while we're doing it. So it's going to be fun. Exactly. But anyway, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. We had a great time. Remember, uh, this is the last week uh, weekend to get uh, my course on the Hidden Creatures of the Forest and Perspective Drawing. So last week, uh, weekend to get that for a dollar. Everything's going up after that. And then also check out Travis's course on using Calipeg, uh, which is the animation app for your iPad. If you want to do hand-drawn animation, download Calipeg and you can do it. And if you want to learn how to use it, check out our course that Travis created on animating in Calipeg. It's really cool. And uh, Travis covers everything, uh, the whole deal. So it's, it's pretty great. And, uh, and then, of course, we've got... Uh, Tony's uh, Tony Cipriano's uh, uh, ZBrush course is out. Uh, Ronnie Williford's Introduction to Drawing is out today. It's available as of today. Brand new course. So if you're brand new at drawing and you want to learn the basics, this is a perfect course for you or someone young in your family. It's really great. So anyway, and then of course, there's all kinds of stuff at Creature Art Teacher. So go check it all out. I hope you guys have a great week. Go ahead, Trav. What? Uh, I just want to say, I love you guys. I love you too. I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you, you Kenny. I love you. That's it. That's all. All right. Go out. Put some beauty back into the world. That's what we do as artists. Put some good back into the world because you know we need it right now. And uh, until, the, what, Friday? I guess Friday. We'll talk to you again on Friday. In the meantime, go make some art and have some fun. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Hey guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream, and I'll see you guys next time.